up uh, Olivia and Randy here. Um, Olivia, influencer, author, a typical multi-hyphenate, just done it all. Uh, I want Olivia to come on because Olivia also is like an, uh, a nomad uh, and really hasn't had much of a home base in, in years and I think has lived her life on the road, traveling uh, and covering travel in a, in a kind of deep and really personal way that I think is special and, and, uh, and, and lovely. And, and so I'm really interested to hear what Olivia has to say about going back on a plane and traveling again. And Randy, who we've worked with for many, many years, is a, a pro on you know, marketing PR for hotels. Um, I think we first met when you were at Hawkins. I think Jennifer was here. Hi, Jennifer. Um, since on and uh, is now managing, uh, what exactly it is, is the It is the Mayborn uh, Beverly Hills. They weren't Beverly Hills, uh, and you're doing the PR and, and, and marketing and influencer strategy for them. So welcome, y'all. Uh, I'll say you. again because I didn't say it early enough last time. But if y'all have questions for Olivia and Randy, throw them in the Q and A. I'll make sure there's some time at the end to uh, to get to those. So, all right. So we talked about events pretty pretty extensively. I want to talk a bit more about travel. Olivia, you've lived your life on the road for years. Um, in, in almost a way that was like voracious, it seemed that you just, you know, if there was a trip you're throwing your way, you were getting on the plane. And it was like, you know, it was about bouncing around and being in all these different places. How are you, you're, you're coming out of COVID now, you've traveled a little bit. How, have you, how are you just thinking about travel personally for, for you? Has it changed? I think it's changed. Um, I mean, it's changed fundamentally by a lot. And I think it's a mixture of the fact that um, leading up to the pandemic, I really did feel like a lot of the press trips I was going on was sort of promoting this burnout culture where a lot of experiences were tailored for more of like, a high, like bringing in a high number of people rather than focusing on the experience itself. And I think a lot of my career I spent traveling just because I was also in my early 20s when I started being invited to press trips. And I was at a stage of my life where like exploring was, you know, the utmost priority for me. And now that I'm like in my late 20s, I think it's a mixture of like having the slowdown. And I think a lot of people in the pandemic has been really intentionally assessing their work and thinking about like their priorities and how their lifestyles have shifted or what they can change. So um, definitely, I think that moving forward, I want to travel. I still, I still, you know, will continue traveling, but it's definitely um, a lot more consciously and, uh, and with a lot more considerations. Yeah. And congratulations for being in your late twenties. That must be nice for you. Um, I'm going to let that slide, but, um, so, you know, for you then, like, do you see yourself turning some of those like more transactional press trips down? Do you, do you see yourself pushing back and asking, Hey, can I stay for a, a week? Cause actually like, I want to try and, you know, dive a little deeper into the, into the area? Like, how are you thinking about that as brands start to reach out and offer these things again? Yeah, I think definitely now as I'm planning even my summer trips, um, I'm, I, like one thing I did in the pandemic is really try to assess my relationship to travel and what experiences have really be, been meaningful. And I think, um, I think I mentioned that like, over the past few months, I participated in this digital retreat and it was talking about sort of the future of travel and promatic traveling. And um, I'm definitely looking for more, par more partners who are aligned in the sorts of experiences that we want to explore together. And I think that for me, those experiences are the ones that are a little bit more sustainable or regenerative. And um, I, I think a lot of people have also shifted to, to nature during the pandemic. And that's also a focus of what I want to focus on with my content moving forward. Yeah. I talked to this author, Sophie Wood, who's a travel writer. And she said that she really felt that the wild places were, were going to start to be the luxury ones, you know, the places that are really hard to get 
to and really isolated because that's you know increasingly rare. Mandy, you've you've been in this game for a long time and um, you know have seen I think a, a pretty broad scope of of just how hotel brands work with influencers. Um, and you're at a luxury hotel in LA right now. Uh, obviously influencer capital of the world. Um, how are y'all, you know, how are y'all thinking about the relationships you build with influencers um, coming out of, uh, of the pandemic? And, and has that changed from your, your earlier thinking uh, early in your career in pre-pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to give some background for, you know, some people that might not know specifically this hotel um, is in a unique situation. Um, prior to the pandemic, this property was the Montage Beverly Hills for about 20 years nearly. Um, and the property closed um, amidst because of COVID. And within that period of time, a management and ownership change happened in which um, British luxury hotel operators and management company, the Mayborn Hotel Group, which own and operate Claridge's, the Connaught and the Barclay in London acquired the property. So we closed as one hotel and then reopened in August as a brand new property. Um, we stripped the sign and kind of didn't say much. Um, so for us specifically, I think we're in a very unique situation because um, we're at a point where when we opened our doors in August, by no stretch of the imagination did we feel it was appropriate to have any events to call all our LA influencer friends and say, come and promote that this is a new hotel and be a part of this journey we are about to embark on. Um, it didn't feel morally right. Um, and, you know, so we opened our doors and we opened it to kind of just be here for the community. Um, our property is located um, in the heart of Beverly Hills. Um, so we wanted our doors to be open, you know, to people in the area. Um, you know, so our approach, I think, is probably a little different for people. But um, for us, you know, we're really looking at being a new, being the first property in North America for such a small and mighty group. Um, we're we're starting our to build our Mayborn family from the from the ground up and looking at the different pillars and things that really are going to identify this property and how we can invite people to be a part of those that journey with us, which includes influencers, whether it's in our spa and our wellness space, with whether it's in the food and beverage space, whether it's lifestyle. Um, and I think taking much, you know, it's given us the opportunity to pull back a little bit to, I think kind of what we've all said is we, this has given us the opportunity to pull back and say, okay, you know, we've all ran in this world of influencers for quite some time now. The trips have become transactional, you know, it was so much more about follower growth and um, what are we really looking at it? What are we looking to gain out of this? How do we make this partnership more than just this one, you know, stay? Um, so, you know, I think for us now, we are at a point where LA is beginning to open up. Um, June 15th, they're saying the state will be fully open. People are definitely out there. We had major events actually inquire over the weekend. We had an 80 person dinner on our roof and then a hundred person engagement party. Um, and everyone was, you know, COVID tested prior. So it was very safe. Um, our staff is completely in PPE and we're tested weekly um, to ensure the safety of the rest of our guests and the hotel staff. Um, but, you know, I think we're excited to kind of start that the ball and, you know, reach out to those influencers. We are eager to not only increase our following, but to generate content, to invite people here to kind of experience what this new hotel is about, but in a in an authentic way and in a way that um, is going to resonate with everyone. Because whether you're an influencer coming here or you're a guest paying a normal rate, you're going to get the same exact experience. Yeah. And that's actually... A perfect jumping off point for my next question for both of you. Understandably, like hotels, um, you know, traditionally haven't had a huge budget to pay influencers. They have a desirable thing that people want, which is free hotel rooms, because who likes paying a lot for a hotel room? Um, and to maximize the amount of coverage that they get, they generally just pull out all the stops, you know, and they treat, you know, they treat that influencer uh, incredibly well, which is 
which makes sense because they're trying to show the best possible version of their property from the room that they put you in to the special things that they do, uh, the activities that they comp for you to do. They want you to show the hotel in its best possible form, which makes sense. Now, coming out of, again, coming out of COVID, similar to what we're talking about with Sydney and Alex, um, you know, Olivia, I'm interested to, to hear how you're thinking about sharing some of that, you know, that stuff that can feel, uh, I think to audiences sometimes a little braggy, uh, like you're flexing of it. Um, you know, how are you thinking about that, that very special treatment that you get from hotels and what makes it onto your feed and stories versus what doesn't? Um, and then Randy, I'd love from here from you from a hotel perspective. Um, you just said you're you're treating you know guests and influencers the same. Um, yeah, is that a shift? You know, how are you kind of thinking about that? So Olivia, if you want to start. Yeah, I think definitely um, we have to think about the sensitivity of our audiences and the fact that influencers have a completely different experience when they go into a hotel versus a consumer. And um, for me, I want to shift the focus on experiences that consumers would have, not exactly the um, more aspirational treatment that perhaps you get as an influencer. Like, you know, when you arrive to the hotel room and it's covered in flowers and balloons, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still love to do, I still love to arrive <laughs> to the hotel like that, but of I've, course. I've also like booked hotel rooms where I've just, you know, I, I paid for it myself. And then I have a view of like a trash can or something. And so like, there is going to be that like disparity of experience and at the end of the day, we want to provide an authentic experience of a property to our readers so that when they end up booking um, a hotel that, you know, to me, I think so nice that our reader can trust us that much that they'll plan their vacations around what we share. It's as authentic as possible to what we experience. And so do you think that there are things that you wouldn't share or would you put like a, a, a caveat on that? Like, how is that? How does that change your your content you think because hotels are still going to pull out all the stops because it, yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Definitely. I, I, in my experience I don't think um hotels have been that um transactional or they've never really had expectations for us to cover you know to document the welcome like chocolate strawberries or anything mm -hmm. I think for the most part it's always just like a courtesy but I've never had an experience where where those elements of being invited to a property has been a, a priority of coverage. Yeah, that makes sense. And Randy, I know that, that, you know, with this reopening of the hotel, you're looking to be super intentional about who you work with and how you work with them. And, and yeah, I would love to, to hear about that because treating an influencer just like a paying customer I, that that's actually like that would be a pretty like revolutionary statement in the hotel industry I would think actually yeah I mean listen we say everyone from our guests to our staff to the influencers to the media are you know they're what makes this hotel go around um and, and I'll give you an example for today in our morning meeting um you know, something we, we do when we partner with influencers or we par are partnering with media, you know, we, I have close relationships with these people so that when they arrive, we're able to personalize their experience. So if they left their dog at home and we know they're obsessed with their dog and they post their dog, we're, you know, doing dog treats or, you know, so that they can take them home and really, again, to your point, wowing them. Um, and sometimes a guest might not get that experience. Um, which is why actually, you know, our team here on the ground, when we are booking guests, we're asking, what are you celebrating? What are you doing here? So that we really can customize their experience to the absolute best of our ability. And yes, we're going through and we're searching them. We're seeing who these people are and what they're doing here. Um, you know, we have a guest checking in today coming from Japan. He just posted this picture of him and his dogs and how, you know, first time traveling, we printed out the picture, we framed it and it will be arrival um along with some other wow factors um so it is truly just as important um that whether you're an influencer coming to stay here or a guest paying that rate that you are getting the same experience and i think it's even more important for inf our influencers because we don't want people to turn around and say well i saw this and this is not what i'm getting um 
And so, you know, I think to your point, yeah, we're being really intentional and in really how we do everything. Um, we are, there's pros and cons to opening a hotel in the midst of a, of a pandemic. And I think we're finally, you know, we're going to see the pros come up here soon and um, really be able to build our brand. And um, through that, we have the ability to step back and say, okay, how do we ensure that no matter who's coming in this building, they're getting a luxury, true, authentic experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think obviously I think uh, on, on the luxury side, like y'all do treat, you know, do treat customers quite, uh, you know, quite <laughs> well, obviously, which is, which is great. It might, my, my, you know, Olivia, something I want to touch on really quickly, I think is, is a little bit outside of the pandemic, but it wasn't the only thing that happened uh, in the last year to change the world dramatically. And I think that, that there is, uh, you know, more, emphasis in general on, on privilege and, and on understanding our place in the world, um, you're really interested in the kind of community aspect of travel and really getting to understand a place. Um, and a lot of times the reason people go to a place is to, to just escape into a, a fairy tale world, which is totally, is totally fine. Uh, but how do you balance those you know, how do you think about balancing those, those things, you know, a, a, like hotels desire to feel like you're in a whole different world and your desire to dive into the communities that are, you know, uh, operating, you know, the, that, that hotel is operating in. That's a really great question. And I think that always just comes down to um, a traveler's um, preference in terms of how they like to travel. I think over time, I definitely found that the experiences where I could feel that a hotel was really tapped into the community was something that just really inspired me and were some of my most formative travel moments, which is why I want to continue sort of pursuing those types of properties. Um, but there's just so much nuance with, with what people want, you know, and it, there's definitely no judgment on anybody who just wants to be like on a lounge chair in a super large resort. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, I think definitely there's different needs for different types of travelers. And I think also because of like my job requiring me to travel all the time, just seeing more community driven stuff was always the stuff that really stuck. Yeah, yeah. And Randy, and I know we're, we're, we're running out of time here. I uh, appreciate y'all uh, hanging out a couple of minutes past deadline. Um, so again, we could just keep going and going. <laughs> um, did you have the, you know, we talked a bit about kind of how you're approaching influencer relationships in general, but you have this really unique uh, opportunity to start almost from scratch, you know, and uh, again, different world than it was a, a year ago. Um, you said it's so important to find those those partners that really are a representation of the brand. What does that What does that mean for uh, for you? Like, what does that mean for y'all? How do you, How are you kind of uh, How are you building that archetype of of the influencer you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, we really are starting from scratch, and it's actually very exciting. I think you know, James, you and I have go far back into the beginning of the influencer world and seeing how it started there and the work we did and kind of being able to do it again, but in a different space because of everything, however, how the world has shifted and just how the database of influencers has increased. So, you know, so increasingly, um, we really are starting from the beginning and it's exciting. Um, you know, I think we're looking at so many different avenues, of course, you know, um, Claire, is our sister property has almost 300,000 followers. So follower growth is very important for us and getting our name out. Um, you know, as I mentioned, when we, when we physically opened the doors, there was no big soiree about it. There was no big press release. Travel was not a thing. So our name really isn't out there. And part of that is intentionally. Um, so, you know, ha get, working with people that have a large voice is important to us. Is it the only thing that's, you know, important? Absolutely not. Um, we want people that are going to authentically reflect our brand and who we are. Um, we are, yes, we are a British luxury hotel company. We are going to bring some British sensibilities to this property, but we are a California hotel. Um, we are not sticking a picture of the queen in the lobby and asking everyone to come sip tea all day. Um, 
but you know so we're looking at everything from the different types of content that people are pushing out and working with different people that have different content because we don't want our influencer or excuse me our instagram page to just be filled of you know the same type of content we want different type of things that are going to attract different type of audiences and different people um so you know from growth to content to tastemakers, looking at people that are just movers and shakers. You know what I mean? You don't need to have a hundred thousand followers. You don't need to have 50,000 followers. We want people that, you know, again, are just going to be a good rep good representation of who we want to be in this city um, and who are going to help tell our name in the right way. And, you know, join us on this journey. We are going to be embarking on about a five-year um, phased out refurbishment plan. Um, so it's going to be a long journey um, and we want people to come along on the ride for us and tell our story in different ways because there's going to be a lot of different uh, stories to tell in the upcoming you know, months and years ahead. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much. I am excited to see uh, the property. Um, obviously, the Cognat is is you know, top five bar in the world for me. I know just voted the best bar uh, in the world. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they're bringing, uh, you know, some of that um, to LA, which would be great. To uh, say the least. <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> I'm excited to, to uh, start to be jealous and slightly hate you again as I watch you travel <laughs> the world. Um, and I think that thanks to everyone who came and, and, um, and listened and, and obviously to the panelists, I think what, you know, what we're hearing a lot of is, is um, something we're so focused on, which is, which is that, you know, authenticity, which starts with honesty and, and just understanding, you know, the world that we're in and the context and being, you know, empathetic and caring and, and, uh, and, but also like, let's go out and do fun stuff again. Let's like, let's have some fun. Let's get together. Let's hug some people. Let's drink some champagne. I love it all. Um, thanks to everybody.